What the male wants and the female needs are in conflict and has spawned an evolutionary arms race, stretching the limits of evolution. A far cry from the shark's simple clasper, insects have evolved the widest variety of penis shapes on the planet. In one of the most shocking, the male damselfly's penis has sharp horns at the tip and spiky thorns down the side. If it looks like a scrub brush, there's a reason. The male uses his tool to scrape out the sperm of his rivals before depositing his own. This technique removes more than 90% of the existing sperm, virtually guaranteeing the offspring will be his. And the males of other insect species take even greater pains to guarantee a return on their deposit. There's a great strategy that some insects and also some mammals have come up with, which is called a copulatory plug. And after a male mates with a female, some of the semen hardens and becomes a plug, and it prevents other males from being able to mate with the female. It's a pretty good strategy. But honeybees take it a step further, not just using a plug, they are the plug. Tens of thousands of male bees compete for the queen. Only one gets to mate with her. Think he's the lucky one? Think again. Upon reaching climax, his penis rips away from his body and becomes stuck inside the queen. He dies in order to lock his sperm inside her. But despite this ultimate sacrifice, female bees evolved a countermeasure, a way to pop out the plug, freeing the female to choose the sperm of another, maybe better mate. In bees, at least, females are winning the sexual arms race. But in other species, the males are taking the lead. In stick insects, males have gone beyond the removable plug, evolving into living chastity belts. They attach to their mates for weeks to prevent any other male from fertilizing her eggs. And the male love bug takes this strategy a radical step further. Once he locks his sex organ inside his partners, he throws away the key. The male's commitment to the act is total. Once joined, he spends the rest of his life in the act of copulation. After the couple is through mating, he will die to be dragged around by the female until she lays her eggs. Eggs all fathered by that single male. From species to species, the sexual arms race is ongoing throughout the insect world. But in one familiar group, females may have found a way to finally end the war. Entomologist Ron Harrison heads up the cockroach extermination lab at the Orkin Training Center in Atlanta. To come up with ways to kill these ultimate survivors, Harrison spends his days studying the species most commonly found in homes. 95% of all cockroach problems in, in urban situations are German cockroaches. They're very quick in their reproductive abilities, and therefore that helps them become resistant to products that we actually use to try to get rid of them. Evolution has provided cockroaches a host of traits that make them almost impossible to eliminate. They can live a month without food and last hours without oxygen. But most critical to their survival is their speed of reproduction, a quality that might indicate that cockroaches have sex all the time, except they don't. Once a female has had sex and has that sperm, she's able there to hold it and then fertilize as she needs, rather than have to have sex again. Because of this one adaptation, the female needs to mate only once to remain pregnant for the rest of her life. Her one act of sex can yield hundreds of thousands of offspring, a remarkable ratio. This benefits the female in more ways than one. Mating in itself is costly. The more a female mates, the lower her probability of survival. Um, perhaps because there's some damage that occurs, they might be at risk of predation, and there's even some seminal fluids that carry toxins that decrease female survival. After her one act of sex, the female carries fertilized eggs with her throughout her entire life. So every female in the colony has the potential to become a colony herself. 
In pest control, what's really scary to us then is if you happen to have uh, a German cockroach in the cuff of your pants or in your pocket or in a box that comes from the grocery store and it happens to be a pregnant female, that's all that's needed to get an entire population going. This adaptation has given the species the ultimate survival advantage. When you look at the whole evolution of animals, these started out 400 million years ago and are continuing to be very successful. You know, when it comes to looking at reproductive biology, you've got to say that cockroaches are a superstar. The battle of the sexes has made cockroaches, together with the rest of the insects, the most diverse group of animals on Earth. The drive to reproduce shapes not only insect life, but mammals as well, including us. Everywhere in the natural world, sex gets everyone bent out of shape. Animals will do anything to mate. The drive to pass on genes and ensure survival of the species is so strong that it causes evolutionary changes. This process is called sexual selection. It's a type of natural selection, but it's the kind of selection for the kind of traits that evolved not to survive another day, but to win at the mating game. To be successful in evolutionary terms, your genes have to be in the next generation. As soon as you have sexual reproduction, what you're doing is going out into the environment and looking for other individuals that are doing well and trying to get some of their genes into your offspring. You need to assess how everybody in your population is doing in terms of their reproductive output. The game of courtship in the animal kingdom is largely typecast. For the most part, males display, females choose. There's not an animal on this planet, in the wild, that will copulate with anybody. They all have favorites. Too old, too young, too scruffy, too stupid acting, and they won't do it. And for good reason, because an animal only has a few chances to pass their DNA on into tomorrow. And so they want to do it with the kind of individual that will really enable them to survive. And females can often have really weird criteria by which they choose which male they're going to mate with. Sexual selection has had huge consequences. Males of a species, they have to compete with each other to find a female, it gives rise to a whole different set of behaviors and appearances in animals to compete with other males and try to get a female mate. For example, a moose uses its antlers to fight other moose in order to win the opportunity to copulate with certain females. So there's two types of traits that evolve for sexual selection. One are traits simply to fight off uh, members of your own gender, and others are traits to attract the opposite sex. The pressures of sexual selection worked on the male stock-eyed fly to compete for the largest eye stalk. On the male finch to sing and to show red on the rhinoceros beetle to grow massive fighting horns, on the male lion to grow his mane, and on the male giraffe to grow a powerful long neck. Some forms of sexual selection can actually drive species extinct because the traits that females prefer are so elaborate that they actually get in the way of day-to-day -day lives of males. Take the case of the Irish elk the ancient cousin of Europe's fallow deer. Females really liked big antlers, and so over time, males with large antlers were selected over males with smaller antlers. Over progressive generations, the average size of antlers in the population got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, the antlers got so big that they were at the very limit of what an animal can sustain and still survive in its environment. And ultimately, the Irish elk went extinct, and a lot of people think that it went extinct because its antlers were just too big. But even after the rams have butt heads and the mating has begun, in some species, the female has more work to do to be sure that goods are delivered. The female or the male approach each other, then the male mounts the female. After one, two seconds, the female starts calling. German primatologist Donna Pfefferle works with a unique group of wild macaques who live atop the Rock of Gibraltar. She came here to investigate the mystery of why female macaques cry out so loudly during sex. 
Over two mating seasons, she recorded the macaques, focusing on the frequency and intensity of the female's cries. She then looked for differences between the females who made noise and the females who didn't. What she found was extraordinary. Far more of the noisy females became pregnant. The earlier, the faster, and with the higher peak frequencies the female calls, the more likely the male is to ejaculate. In fact, males were ten times more likely to ejaculate with a calling female than with a silent one. Pfefferle concluded that the females evolved the loud sex noises in a clear case of sexual selection. The noises increase the odds of bearing young.